Dear Father, please state your name and where and when was you born. My name is uh, Robert Michael Nam Nguyen, uh, pastor of Christ in Paris. Uh, I was born in Vietnam, 1962, uh, in Phan Thiet. Can you share any memory that you have in Vietnam? Well, when I was in Vietnam, I was still very young. Uh, I remember the uh, communists um, came very close to our village and they were fighting, they were bombing. I uh, did witness uh, many of them die along the border. Um, I experienced Tet Motan 1968, I had to run away from home. Uh, 1975, uh, the fall of Saigon, I was uh, running away uh, for life with my family from, from Phan Thiet to Vung Tau and uh, stayed there until uh, uh, everything calmed down and then returned home and lived under the regime, a communist regime for three years and then we decided to escape in 1978. Uh, Father, why you uh, you decide to give in? I did not make a decision. Uh, my mother, who was the one who made a decision, because she has four growing boys, and uh, if if her boys did not leave this place, uh, they may not have the opportunity to be somebody. And so she secretly arranged everything. I did not even know until the night that we actually left. And she told me to go to certain plates and stay there until further notice. And that's how we left. I would like to keep uh, <coughs> about your trip in a few minutes later, but uh, uh, can you describe your hardship and your family hardship uh, during the time you lived under the communist regime? When we were living there, um, of course, the uh, the Catholic school uh, had been taken away. That's one of the hardest part for us as uh, the parishioners who who so used to that that school. We grew up in that with the, in that school, and now uh, being replaced by all the uh, government teachers and replaced the cross crucifix by Ho Chi Minh picture and that was the hardest part for us and uh, at the same time the uh, the church uh, was uh, uh, confiscated and shut down and we had no place to go nowhere to worship uh, we have to my mother and, and along with other women who, who protected the church from being taken away so they have to sleep around the church make in the circle to protect anyone who come in in the middle of the night might drop uh, might, might secretly uh, plates uh, grenades or uh, guns so that the communists can accuse and uh, take away our pa pastor or take away our church and it happened it happened can you recall what happened to your pastor father? My pastor, Father Vu Hai Dang, um, Vu, Vu Hai Dang, uh, Vu Ngọc Dang, I'm sorry, Vu Ngọc Dang, he, um, after we left, we, after we escaped, um, he was uh, apprehended by the communists. Before we left, he, the communists um, did attempt to apprehend him at night time at 3 o'clock in the morning. At that time, we were alert. And I was the one who ran around the village to alarm the people. And we came out to stop that uh, incident. Then after my mom and my family left, uh, not too long after that, he was apprehended. And he was in prison for eight years for no reason. When they apprehend um, your pastor, did they tell anyone or did they later? They, they come at night time. They sneak in at the night time. And no uh, arresting or no court order whatsoever? No. You know how it is with the communists. When they want to uh, arrest the leader, 
they found a way and they accused to, to get him. Um, now, can you uh, describe uh, your journey to freedom? Ooh, it was difficult, and every every journey, everyone, everyone's journey is has its own story. Uh, mine, um, I was almost fourteen at the time, and um, we have we have no way to to escape unless we create. Uh, a situation and that is that uh, they allow fishermen to go out but before the boat leave the dock the uh, security has to check on the few and the number of people uh, so that they won't escape they, they only limited the amount of fuel for one day and so what we did is that we uh, secretly uh, uh, buying fuel and have someone to submerge the container in the ocean with the uh, with the sinker hold to in order to hold the the fuel to have to have heavy sinker rocks to keep them for us uh, we have enough fuel for the journey and uh, we have to uh, we have to uh, to buy names with another fisherman from another boat. So we have two, three boats go out, but we bought their names. I was I was given a, a, another name, and I was told that when that name call, I say here, to so make sure that that person is on the boat. And uh, we went out and. We pick up the people at five o'clock in the morning from the beach. Uh, I was almost dead at the time because the anchor, the rope of the anchor tied my foot and pulled me in the ocean when they uh, anchor the boat to pick up the people at the beach. But my, my father, my brother were quick enough to jump into the water to uh, untie my, 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 my leg to uh, take me back into the boat. And uh, unfortunately, when we pick up all the after we pick up all the people, then we went to look for the fuel. Uh, unfortunately, the undercurrent swept it away. We have no fuel, but we couldn't go back. We knew if we go back, we will be arrested and sent to a hard labor camp, and our house will be confiscated, and we have uh, a lot of hardship afterward. But we make a decision to leave. And won't come back and we uh, rely on the grace from above to lead us to safety and after 15 days with hardship hunger thirst and rejection we finally sunk the boat at uh, Malaysia Beach in order to get in because we want we, we did uh, got uh, we did get to the uh, to uh, Malaysia but uh, the uh, Coast Guard Malaysian Coast Guard pushed it away. We, we went down to Mala, Singapore and then Singapore asked for gold, 13 bars of gold. We didn't have gold, so they kicked us out. And then after that, we make a decision to go back to Malaysia and sunk the boat. After we have dropped children and women on the beach, the young men turn the boat around, let it go by itself, and sink the boat. Let it sink slowly. That's how we got in. How many were you, Hara? 34 on, bo on board. Mm. And uh, we have, uh, we were, the journey took 15 days. How you managed to run for 15 days while you have uh, fuel only for one day? Well, we let the boat drift. Oh. And we encountered a couple of ships, but they ignore us. And then uh, uh, we have, uh, we didn't use, uh, we very conserved the energy, the fuel. We only crank the engine when we need to run. But other than that, we let it drift. So there were, after many days, uh, with the boat drift closer to Malaysia, and we saw a fishing boat there. And uh, 
No, no. Before we saw the fishing boat, we saw the um, we encountered the um, the American ship, Navy ship, and they stopped. They gave us uh, uh, drinks and water and fuel, but the fuel was bad because they they draw they draw the fuel from the bottom of the tank. So most of the, the oil that we they gave to us was no good. So we had to dump and continue to let it drip. And they told us the direction how to get to Malaysia. So we let it go slowly. And uh, finally we found a, a fishing boat um, from Malaysia. And we gave them all the jewelry exchange for food, drinks, and direction. Um, even uh, went through a hardship, but everyone in your boat was uh, be able to, I mean, leave or anyone uh, was sick or die? Uh my boat at that time no my my sister who ex, uh, who escaped one year uh, one year afterward uh, uh, with 30 day journey two kids died from starvation because they didn't have food for 15 days only water they are used from the ocean and and uh, this still boil it and use a distill uh, system to to have the fresh water evaporated through the ch the chamber and then that's how they get the fresh water out and feed almost 40, 42, 43 people every day, one uh, tablespoon per day for 15 days. Uh, Pado, how that hardship shape up your life? The hardship gave me the strength to go through all arts of life. I went here, I was bully, no English, Mm, no security, everything was new. I was uh, in a lot of shock, culture shock. Uh, I, uh, I started English uh, at the community, studied at night time, and at the same time, during the daytime, I went to school, but I was bullied by so many people. Um, I was very, very disheartening, uh, dis uh, very disappointed. Uh, very sad, uh, but eventually um, I, I, I cannot allow those things to, uh, to stop me from growing and be somebody, so I make a decision to move on in life despite of anything going on. I just had to learn to be strong. Can you recall any incident that you still remember until now? What about incident? Bully? Well, in, uh, in school, a uh, few uh, local boys, whites and blacks, uh, who uh, teased me because I didn't, didn't speak at all. I didn't speak a word of English. So they mm, take things away from me and they, they toss to each other and they laugh. They have a lot of fun. And uh, I did use my fist to teach them a lesson. Don't, don't, don't fool with me. Um, why and... Why did you decide to go to seminary? I had that dream when I was a boy in Vietnam, uh, but since I came to the United States, uh, the, the commitment to study and all the attractions of the society uh, really uh, shift my dream into a new direction. I was uh, in high school when I played soccer and I played football for high school. I was uh, an MVP. Uh, for soccer team and, uh, and was chosen to go to state team and football I had a they call the golden leg that I can kick football pretty good and very far the, the longest the longest uh, yeah, field goal that I kicked was 47 field goal and uh, I have a big dream and that temptation shift my uh, my, my direction but uh, one day before, before I, I, uh, I decided to go to college, one day the Mass for the vocation to the priesthood and religious life, celebrated by Father uh, Andrew Tengkarte, now passed away already at, over a year, who, who really uh, inspired me to refocus the dream that I had when I was a child back in Vietnam. That's how I started. I put aside everything, all the fancy, the fantasy of being a rich boy, as a football player, I put it aside and entered the college. Was it? Yeah. Even I have a few girls trying, trying to get my, get my attention, so, but I, I make a decision not to let anything bother me so I could focus 
in, in, in to join the seminary. But it, it, within that four years of philosophy, I um, I would struggle. I would struggle as a man, uh, and I found a lot of hardship. Not only education, because it's a completely new language with uh, very difficult courses that I have learned. Uh, at the same time, the, the temptation of being a football player continued to haunt me. Uh, and uh, it to the point one day I make a decision to leave, to leave the seminary to join the college football. I did. I did sign the exit. And but the night before I left the seminary, I have a beautiful dream. And in that dream, I saw that I was ordained in the cathedral where I did ordain. And I saw the vision that I saw a lot of people were there with my family and friends. And it happened. And that's how it changed everything. Uh, my father, how was the training? Training to be priesthood? Yes, sir. Tough. The language, first of all, the language. I mean, I was just a new guy, and not many, not many years uh, came to the United States. I came when I was 14, and then by the time 18, I joined the seminary, and philosophy, theology, Bible, and everything was just so new to me. And uh, it's the one of the most struggle subject I have to deal with, but patience and uh, determination. How do you? Uh I mean, emotional feeling in seminary uh, training school. Uh, you were bullied in public school. You find any of uh, you know hardship or discrimination in I mean, seminary? Not not much, not much. Uh, but you, know, you can sense it. You know, the, the Vietnamese love to hang around with each other to communicate in Vietnamese because you feel more comfortable. But we have the poor the policy that you cannot. Uh, communicate in Vietnamese in order to help us to to be better in English but they have the policy but we still love sneaking around talking Vietnamese <laughs> uh, Father, uh, we uh, know now there are a lot of uh, Vietnamese American priests who assimilate to Catholic uh, US Catholic churches and serving uh, do you know how many of Vietnamese American priests are serving in the United States Church right now? Oh, I don't know for sure. Uh, I know that there are, there are uh, close to 1,000 Vietnamese serving in the United States. Close to 1,000. Average a year, new ordained priests uh, ranging from uh, 35 to 45 per year. That's a good number, from 35 to 45. And uh, we have, we are the only, only uh, ethnic group who has so many national churches. That is, we form our own parish. Whichever, wherever the, 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 mm, the diocese allow the Vietnamese to build their own church and build their own parish, it will happen. The only states that does not allow the Vietnamese to build their own church is California. But other than that, we grow and we grow uh, very fast. We have uh, about 75 Vietnamese national parishes in the country. <coughs> beside, beside there are my, beside there are many small community. Beside the parish, there are small community that operating on their own. Well, in your own opinion, what, you, what do you think? Why is that the Vietnamese American be able to do that? Oh, the pride and also that uh, we always love to build things on our own. We don't rely or to wait for help. We don't rely on people for our own survival. We rely on our ability, our talents and our resources and our commitment to our own people. And that's how you notice that uh, we have our own shop everywhere. We have names, Vietnamese names, of uh, as uh, we use for street name, Tu Yo, 
đường và Sài Gòn, Văn Chu, đường Kiêm, đường uh, Lê Thị Thành in New Orleans area. I very, 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 we take very high pride of that. Very proud of that. Thank you, Father. Um, what have you found most challenging while you have served in uh, mainstream church? Most challenging? Yeah. To be honest, um, I still find that mm, there are very small percentage of uh, discrimination. Uh, but in general, because the Vietnamese priests have done so well, majority have done so well, and the Vietnamese have been highly respected by the local churches. Um, the struggles for the Vietnamese right now is still the, uh, the English problems, uh, the language. We, uh, English is not our mother, mother tongue language. Many uh, older priests uh, uh, do uh, struggle with that. Um, there are there are priests who uh, who 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 have problem to uh, to to uh, to see the the Vietnamese uh, grow so fast in a very short period of time, and they they have little problem uh, of uh, of um, adjusting. You know, we we came very late. You know, the the Spanish came here hundreds of years ago. The Chinese came very two hundred years ago. The Span the Japanese came here about hundred years ago. Uh, we we are the latecomers, but uh, we have done significant job. We jump a big jump. We won't walk. We we jump uh, in uh, political uh, uh, area, academic, uh, socially and religiously. We jump a big jump. Uh, besides loving God, uh, we know that you also have a big love for your own brother and sister, mm -hmm. and that um, after you was ordained, you volunteered to work at a Vietnamese refugee camps in Southeast Asia for quite some time. Can you share with us your experience during that time? Before I was ordained, I did work for the Philippines for refugees. Uh, at the Vietnamese uh, refugee camp uh, in Palawan, Philippines for exactly one year. And after that, I came back and uh, ordained to be a priest. Uh, four years afterwards, I was asked by the Bishop Conference of the Philippines to come back to assist the Vietnamese at the newly built village called Viet Village. Uh, and uh, the, uh, my Archbishop uh, released me so that I can assist my own people in the Philippines. Um, being there, uh, I, uh, I was like a mediator between the refugees and the local authority. I, I was the, uh, um, uh, like a, um, <laughs> the um, secretary of the state connecting and sending messages between two sides, the local Philippine government and the Vietnamese people, and I became very close to uh, all the general, Air Force general, uh, Army generals, and uh, and uh, Marine generals, so that I can I can uh, um, serve the people uh, when needs arrives. I can always ask for help, and uh, the military general always very uh, very generous when I ask them for something for my people. And that's how I did. What about, you know, your witness? Uh, how would their living condition and their mental during that time? Well, there are a variety of a group of people, some are healthy uh, in mind and uh, in body, some not. Especially those who went through so much hardship like uh, encounter those who encounter with pirates and being raped and being uh, were able to, to witness um, their own family members uh, being killed and being tossed into the ocean 
mentally they were tormented for years and those who um, who did eat human flesh to survive uh, somehow some way they were mentally uh, uh, affected and um, those who uh, had lost their own uh, people due to starvation or through uh, uh, stone and uh, piracy uh, somehow they, they were mentally uh, unstable uh, and uh, had affected uh, their uh, establishments in the in the uh, refugee camp uh, some did overcome and be able to function prior normally but not many and those who did go through a lot of hardship they had a lot of problem uh, to those who did not have a lot of hardship they they um, they they were very well uh, adjusted to it and always look forward to be able to reunite with their family members who already uh, reside in other countries um, I didn't find a lot of uh, a lot of difficulties when I served there because uh, the people were pretty much uh, 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 well assisted by not only the the uh, United Nations, but also by their own family members in other countries. At the same time, they themselves in that refugee camp established business. They 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 run their own business, and and they they earn their dollars. Not only to the local Vietnamese in the refugee camp, but at the same time, they also go out beyond the boundary of the refugee camp to do business with the local people, the Filipinos, and they earn their dollars. They are very uh, industrious and very, work hard, uh, very committed to working in order to survive in, uh, in a very short time. Father, <clears throat> do you still have any contact with the people in the refugee camp uh, up until today? And how, if so, how do you live right now? Especially the one that like you described that they have very hardship from piracy or from you know, their loved one die in the ocean. I did not uh, have any more contact with them because after I left, each of them go different direction. And uh, I, I, as of now, I don't re, uh, recall anyone except one of the priests that I know, my classmate, uh, who already passed away because of drowning. But he, his family went through a lot of hardship because they encountered piracy twice. And he did witness his brother was killed on the boat and tossed on, into the ocean and he was uh, haunted by it from time to time, especially uh, when we talk about, um, we commemorate the, uh, the fall of Saigon, the April 30th, 1975 uh, uh, commemoration. Now he's still haunted by it. Uh, Father, was you in New Orleans when Katrina came and what will happen to you, can you recall? <laughs> It was a big story. I was uh, associate pastor at uh, St. Mark Church in Chamet City, uh, the the, uh, the county of uh, St. Bernard. And uh, I, I didn't prepare well, simply because uh, the previous hurricane, like George and uh, other, didn't didn't strike New Orleans and so this this time I just, just I still have mass for schedule on Sunday until after the first early Sunday morning mass I came back home and we followed the news uh, and the monster came and came very close and at that time we make a decision to leave and I took with me only two or three sets of clothes and one pair of shoes 
and uh, left everything behind. I don't know how was your parishioner? Are they the same situation? Many of them who did not uh, evacuate, many of them died because the water came so fast in a short period of time. It sucked up even the building and transferred the building and concrete of the foundation from one location to the other. That's how, how powerful the water was. So where, where is your children now? It's gone. Church, school, rectory, office building, gone. They level down. It's no longer you be able to use. So they, this, the diocese sold, sold that property to the government and now they built upon that soil ground a big, big uh, public school. Oh, wow, it's so powerful, Father. Mm -hmm. So what happened to your parishioner and the parish? Well, the church is no longer there. Many of them make a decision to leave the area and find a new location. Uh, as of now, uh, only 50% have gone back in that particular area of the church. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking about in, in the whole county, but I'm talking about that particular church area. Uh, a, a lot of them vacant lots. Uh, uh, there are a lot of vacant lots. It's a sign that they never return. How do you ever come back there and how you feel when every time you pass It's sad, that? sad. It's a good memory now with a lot of sad memories. Uh, hopefully, uh, with the new hurricane protection wall and, and levy, uh, give people the confidence to return. But uh, the experience was just too much for them to handle and the fear that it might happen again, that's why they make the decision to leave. In the um, No, they went a different direction. Far from here? Uh... Yeah, they're not sure. They go north. They don't want to leave closer to the, land, to the water anymore. They go north. Okay. I love fishing, so I stay here. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Father, uh, uh, how long have you served at the Christ of the King Church and uh, what have you found most rewarding while you're serving in the church? Well, I've been a priest 20 years. I served different churches and this is the first church I function as the pastor. And this is my seven years. And serving as a pastor here, uh, I, I, I operate this parish uh, single-handedly uh, without um, without uh, the, the parish council uh, without uh, housekeeper without the cook uh, I manage money properly so that uh, it's uh, well spent every dollar that people donated is well spent and I've been very conscious about uh, using the money spending the money. So I, 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 I catch my own fish to eat, so I don't have to buy. I, ray, I, I, I grow my own vegetable in the backyard, so I have to buy. Uh, people donate um, food. So I, 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 uh, I'm very grateful to save a lot of money for the church in order to pay what I need to pay, uh, all the bills and debt, and give the uh, staff a, a raise for their hard work and their commitment. Like you try to uh, cut your own leg and you raise other people's salary. Yeah. Father, how is that the personal response, I mean, uh, react when uh, you have no, I mean, community council, no cook, no uh, like that? Right? Hey. Did they uh, first, in, uh, in the beginning, uh, how was they react? <laughs> well, 50, uh, almost 50 years, this parish run with three priests. Yes, they always have a cook, always have a housekeeper. Uh, things changed. The shortage of priests, the, uh, 
they uh, the the the, um, the money is getting lower and the debt still high. Uh, no, we no longer have the privilege to have two three priests serving, so we have to adjust. Um, since I came, I'm first Vietnamese pastor after almost 50 years long history. And the cook kind of cooked Vietnamese, so I had to let her go. And I cook my own food. I take care of everything. I, I, I'm a pastor, a cook, a, a housekeeper. I, I, I'm a man of many faces. <laughs> I heard that you're fishing too. I fish. I fish uh, on my day off. So I bring fish home to give to the people. And I eat what I, I, I keep whatever I eat and give it to the people. Okay. That's my hobby. <laughs> it it balances my life. <laughs> uh, Father, why are you serving uh, the mainstream? How you connect with the Vietnamese American community? Oh, I, I, I do visit the Vietnamese community a lot through uh, different events like funeral, weddings, uh, fair, New Year like this. Anything going on, uh, I was invited and I, I come. I set the task aside time and schedule my time to come to be among uh, the Vietnamese people. I heard that your family is living around here too and you have a very uh, tight and, and support family. Can you share with us about that? Your family? <clears throat> Uh, family wise, I uh, supporting. Uh, I have aunts, uncles, uh, who supported me a lot. My sister, who supported me. My mom, who supported me a lot. Uh, I have a lot of friends, good friends, who very generous, very supportive, very kind to me. There, and uh, they have been one of the uh, great strength to uh, to give me a lot of. Uh, energy to to uh, to blend in and to continue to work in this mainstream of American church society uh, family they 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 support in, in its own uh, way and its own uh, uh, value I have friends who have a different way of supporting me that's how I have a lot of uh, energy to uh, keep on going uh, father <coughs> Do you have any dream? I know that you you seem like you uh, your life are in uh, order right now. But do you have any dream for yourself, for your church, and your Vietnam? I dream that one day I will go to Vietnam as a free man. See, Vietnam is a free country. Democracy and freedom for Vietnam. That's my dream. Hope that uh, I will experience that when I'm still alive. Father, we, you, thank you for sharing with us uh, um, a lot uh, in your life. But uh, do you have to, you want to say anything that I didn't ask you yet? One thing uh, I want to share with you that uh, even though I, I live in the mainstream of American society, I, I speak English better than I speak Vietnamese. Uh, I think and I act and I I behave like an American sometimes, uh, but my deep within my soul, deep within my heart, I am who I am as a Vietnamese, and I I love my country. I miss my country. I, I pray and I do a lot of good deeds for my Vietnamese who are poor back in Vietnam to different different activities and agencies. Uh, I I hurt when I I feel that my people. Uh, the poor don't have the opportunity to grow, and uh, the uh, the one in power uh, only think of themselves, not uh, think about the common good of the people. They rake in their own riches and disregard uh, the consequences and uh, neglect the duty as the elected officer to care for the country and care for the poor. Uh, they only think of themselves. That's one thing I hate it. And one day I hope that uh, things will change. Father, okay. uh, what are you consider yourself as a Vietnamese, Vietnamese American or American? Well, 
Vietnamese American because I, I am a dual citizenship Vietnamese and America. Uh, I live here, I serve here. Uh, Vietnamese has a, a, has a, has a, 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 a saying, uh, I, 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 I live, I was raised, I was nurtured here. Uh, and I serve here as as a, a priest. At the same time, I n never, never in my mind to uh, lose sight of, of where I came from. Uh, cha, cha nói lại cho con một câu là I am Vietnamese American, một cái cùng tráng. Còn tại có khi chúng con có những cái đoạn chúng con cắt cắt, chúng con cho những mỗi người nó một lần như cái điều đó nhé. Giờ chỉ con con hỏi để cha nói, what do you consider yourself as? Vietnamese American. Cho nó nguyên câu I am. I am. Consider myself as a Vietnamese American. I live here. I was nurtured here. I was given the opportunity to grow to be somebody. So uh, I have to um, give back what I received. Thank you. I think you just started right very close to when you start. So we need to ask. Lúc mà con con nói chưa xong thì cha nói rồi nên là nó hơi gần. Bây giờ cha nói lại câu đó cho con là I am a Vietnamese American cái gì đó là. I consider myself a Vietnamese American. I I came here as a teenager. I I I I was nurtured here. I I I had I was received the opportunity to grow to be somebody as a priest for 20 years. I will work here and serve here and um, I um, never lose heart, uh, lose sight of uh, where I came from, but I am, I thank God I was able to live in this country and serve this country. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs>